Hey guys, in this tutorial, I want to show you all the available features in the Siwi desktop editor and how you can create a photo book. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. I also have my new Patreon page if you want to support this channel in return for cool rewards. So Siwi has three different editors. One is for the smartphones, one is for the desktop, and one is an online editor. They are very similar, but the smartphone and online editor are a lot more limited in features and product availability. So the best way to make a photo book with Siwi is to download their desktop editor, which you can do on their website, and it's available for all platforms, Windows, Mac, and Linux. So once you downloaded it and installed it, this is how it opens up, what you can see on the screen now. And you can see the products up here, Siwi photo book, prints, wall art, posters, calendars, Siwi cards, and photo gifts. So I'm gonna show you how to do a photo book. So you can either select from here, or you can come to the Siwi photo books, and here you see large portraits, so they are basically uh, grouped by sizes and you have the elegant covers in the very end and this is the newest photo book that I did my review about a week ago. So let's try one of these elegant cover books. So you click on the elegant covers and then you see how the book is going to look and you've got two size options. In the bottom here you see the main features of the book, so the highlights, the different cover options and the paper type. I'm going to select the extra large square and then here you have to select one of the available cover options. You've got three leather and three linen. I'm going to go with black leather. And then here again, you've got two options. You can either create a book with the assistant or you can start designing by yourself. The assistant is an AI algorithm, so it looks through all your pictures and selects the best ones, arranges your photos in the book chronologically based on the timestamp in the photos and it creates a, a general book for you that you can either order as it is or you can fine tune it yourself. I'm going to start with the design from scratch because I want to show you all the available features in the Siwi editor. So let's go start designing and the first thing you have to do is select a template. Now here's so many templates to choose from. You can see a couple of pages from it. You can see the actual layouts, the background. So here's a button, download more book templates, which means that basically if you're not happy with the ones that are preloaded in the editor, you can download some more. So let me choose something quite generic, coordinates in white. I'm gonna click on this one, use selection. When you select your photos, you obviously have to find the folder on your computer. My photos are in this folder here, so you need to know where your pictures are. So once you've found your photos, let's have a look at what we have in this editor. So in the uh, left tab here, we have the photos and videos, so your browser. Underneath we have the themes, so three themes are added to this one at the moment, but of course you can add some more and you can see that I can apply some of these themes and it changes my cover theme. Underneath you've got book templates, so these ones are going to show up once you go onto one of your inner pages. So if I go to page two and three, then my book templates are going to show up. And again, these are different themes that you can choose for the inner pages of the book. Underneath that, we've got page layouts. These are all the available layouts. These are not based on the themes in the book. These are just layouts with a set amount of pictures. So it shows you here all the options with two pictures. Now you can see how many there are. There are hundreds and hundreds just with two pictures and then two pictures in text. And if I go to, I don't know, 24 photos, you see lots of templates for 24 pictures, so you can select your layout based on the number of photos on it. If you want to use any of these layouts, all you need to do is drag it onto the page and then you need to drag your photos into the boxes. Underneath that, we've got backgrounds. Again, lots of backgrounds to choose from and they are put into categories. If I want to apply any of these backgrounds, I click on the background and I can either drag it or if you look in the bottom here, it says add background to current double page, add background to the left side, add background to the right side. So it just depends where you want to apply this background to. I'm going to apply it to both pages and now you can see it applied to both pages. If I come to clip art, again, I have lots of little um, elements here that I can use for my book and all I have to do is drag it onto the page and then just put it wherever I want it to go. 
In the bottom we've got masks and frames. The difference between a frame and the mask is that the frame is always going to have some kind of embellishment on it, but the mask can be just like changing the edges of the photo. So let's try something with love. And then you can see this one is a mask because if I put it on, it kind of gives a grubby edge or it changes the photo into a heart shape but this one is going to be a frame because it puts something around the picture. Now, if we come to the bottom side here, you can see all your pages and you can scroll through. You can add four more pages or you can take away four more pages. You can also rearrange pages if you move around the double spread. So I click on page six and seven and I drag it and I put it in between these two and then it moves. When we come to the top side here, we have a save button if you want to save your work. We have an open if you want to open a different project. We have the assistant, which you can enable or disable, and you have a very useful undo button. You have your usual copy and paste, the cut, remove button, add new photo, add new text box, and add a new map, which is going to be a Google map. And the highlight option comes up for the very first page. As you can see, the cover, if I click on this, I can select what kind of highlight I want it to be. Is it silver, gold, or rose gold? So let's come to this right side here because that's where the most important things are. Now let's drag some photos into this one so we can see what happens. The first step here on the right side is the edit button or the edit tab. If I click on a photo, I get quite a few options what I can do. So first of all, I can zoom my picture in. I can zoom it out. I can rotate the photo in the frame if I want to. I can use the photo as a background for both pages. And there are some quality buttons here. So the first one is an automatic image optimization. You can disable it or enable it. I would leave it enabled because it probably applies the best possible options to make sure your book prints well. The second one is red eye reduction. So if you have red eyes in some of the photos, you click on the eye and it should remove it. Then you have a third grid, which helps you to kind of position your picture. And there is also a quality display here, which shows you if it's a red face, the quality of the photo is too bad for print. The yellow one, it's not optimal, but you can still print it. And the green one means it's really good quality and it should be fine in print. Underneath, you've got some markings on maps, which obviously is not available for the pictures. And you can start the photo editing. So if I click on the photo editing, a whole new window opens up. Now in the first one, color effects, You've got the usual sepia and you can tune it down or just a little bit, a little bit more and so on. You always have to click on OK. You've got black and white, gamma correction, recolor, invert, transparency, saturation. Then you've got adjustments. Again, red eye reduction. You can crop the picture if you want to. So if I just want that much, then you select that, crop it. And there we go. You can flip it vertically, horizontally, straighten it if it's, you know, not completely straight. Just move it a little bit and then again, click on OK. Brightness and contrast can make it a lot more contrasty. Again, save it and then blurring is just going to make it blurred. It's good for a background, but obviously not for a foreground picture. Again, you have the undo button here if you want to bring back the photo. You've got soft focus and painting. Underneath, you've got image optimization, so brighten up the shadows and it's gonna look at my shadows, brighten them up. Reduce noise, which again, kind of smooths out some of the noise. It's not like in Photoshop, but it's trying to mimic that. Beautiful portrait, which again, applies some kind of beauty effect, optimize and bright eyes. And then the last one is style effects. So you have some funky styles like collage and things like that, that you can use in the books if you want to. So when you're happy with the editing of your photo, then you click on the back, but make sure you save all of these edits before you go back. And it says replace the photo in the product. Do not save the changes. You obviously want to save them, so replace the photo in the product. So that was about editing the photos inside the photo album. Now let's come to the arrange window. The first thing you'll see here is help with the alignment. So you can put on a grid, which helps you move the objects better. And you also have a magnetic tool, which is off at the moment, but if you put it on, then it's going to kind of um, stick to certain points. 
So you will see where the blue one goes and then it's going to align up nicely with certain objects. You can center the object horizontally, vertically, you can put it to the left, you can put it to the right, you can put it to the top, put it to the bottom and so on. And if you select multiple objects like all three of these, then you can move them together. Now underneath that we've got arrange layers and it shows as grey. So what that basically means is if you've got multiple photos on each other, you can bring some of them to the front or to the back. So if I move this picture on top of these two and I want this one to be on the front, then I can bring it to the front and it's going to be in front of the other photo. Underneath we've got rotate object, easy peasy. Change object size if you want to be very specific with centimeters and add to delete pages. And we've got the special functions layout and this one is really, really important. So here is the first one, which is the next layout. Now when the layout function is set to automatic, then as you could see when I was dragging my photos in, the layouts were changing automatically. So if I add one more photo here, it's going to create a layout automatically. So it changes what you had before on the page. And the more photos you drag in, the more it's going to change your layout. Now, if I'm not happy with these three vertical images, then what I can do is click the next layout and it's going to give me a shuffle of options that you can do with three photos. So it's a really good tool if you want to do some creativity and you don't really know how to arrange the photos, then you can just press it until you see something that you really like. You can do the same thing if you come to the layout and drag them onto the editor surface. It does the same thing, but with the shuffle, you can just do that without dragging these onto the layout and you might stumble onto something that you, know, you really like. Now, what happens if I want to add something to my photo book and I don't want the existing layout to change? Then you come to this little second button, which says automatic tool on photos. Now this is on because it's ticked. If I click on it, there's going to be a little X, which means that now it's switched off. So now I can drag more photos onto my page, like one more here and my layout is not going to change. And now I have the option to move it wherever I want to. I can change these, I can add a new box, I can add a new text box, I can click on it, press the copy button and the paste button, so it's going to make two of it. And then finally you've also got some mirroring here where you can mirror your layout horizontally, vertically, and you can also mirror the page from the left onto the right side, so if you want it to look really nice. So what I can do is click on this page and mirror it to the right side, so my layout is nicely matched. The final option is the decorate option. So if I click on my photo, I've got border. I can click on the toggle to enable it and the little arrow is gonna give me my options. So I can make it much wider. I can change the color. I can change the position inside or outside. I've got shadows. If I want to add some shadows to my photo, again, I can change the intensity out of focus distance. So there's a lot of uh, tools that you can play with. And you've got transparency, which is basically opacity. It's going to make your photo a bit more see-through. And you've got corner sizes and shapes. So I can make my corner rounded, as you can see it here. Or I can make it angular. The final thing I want to show you is what you can do on the cover. So when you come to the cover, you can select this little clip art or you can put your own text onto it. So if you click on the text, and again, you can, once you click into the text, it's going to give you the option of silver, gold, or rose highlights. Wedding, whatever. If you come to the edit button, you have a lot of text options to choose from. So just because it's a highlight, you still have the same options for all the font sizes, text color background, and so on. Obviously the text color is going to be metallic. Now with these highlights, you can either choose text frames or clip art. So if I come to my clip art, you can see anything I drag on is going to be metallic because all of these clip art that appear here under the rose gold option are going to be available in the metallic highlights. So you can use any of these on the cover of the books to make them really stand out. If you want to change the product details of your book, you come here in the bottom where you see the add to basket and change product details. And then you can change the cover to hardcover, you can change it to linen, and you can see how the price changes according the number of pages, and you can also change the paper. See, if you come to the hardcover, you've got six paper options and two binding options, but if you come to the linen, 
then the paper option and the binding is automatically set for you because there are no options for it. So it has to be a matte photographic paper with lay flat binding. The last thing I want to show you is the assistant if you want to use that. So if I click on the assistant, I don't want to save this project and I want to create a new one. So it says drag individual photos or an entire folder to this workspace. So I'm going to select my entire folder, which is this one here. And I'm going to drag it here to the workspace. So it selects all my pictures automatically. And here on the right side, you have the photo selection. So you have to select how many photos you want to have in the book and how many pages. And then it's going to give you an average for how many photos you will have on each page. So in this case, based on 43 pictures and 26 pages, I'm going to have 1.7 pictures per page. But if I want to reduce the amount of pictures I have to like 30, then it's going to have 1.2 photos per each page. Once you're happy with these two numbers, you create select theme and let's go with this wedding theme here. And I'm going to drag it on. Again, if you want a different one, you can download more. So let's put it here and you can see the, the layout and it also shows you how the book looks at the moment. So let's see what it did. I think it arranged the pictures actually really nicely. Now you see certain things like these shoes and this picture here, which is too thin. So that's why you need to fine tune these automatic photo books because sometimes they don't know what to do with certain pictures. But in general, it's a good layout function. So what you can do now is change these attributes. So if I make it 30 pages, it's going to redo my book. And now you can see that I have far more photos which are going to be a page uh, big, like a full bleed page. So these two tools here are really important when you create a fully automated photo book. Then I can go check and edit project. So if I come here, now I can do my usuals. I can put in clip art if I want to. I can change my layout and so on. So you have the same availability after this point as what I showed you before, but it starts you off with a full layout for the whole book if you don't want to start dragging your photos in one by one. The last thing I want to show you is this video feature. So let's come to this page and I'm going to drag a video on. So the videos are in the film strip. Uh, I'm going to do this one. And now you can see your video here and you see the little box for the video. So what you can do is make this a little bit smaller, put it up here. So you know there's a video on your page and put this in the corner. So when you look at your book, it's going to upload this video now into the Siwi server. You have to pay for it. I think it's £1.50 for three years and you have a maximum of 30 years to store them at the moment. So when you do that at the checkout process and you get your photo book and you start looking through the photo book and you scan this code with your phone, it's going to play the video that was on your computer. So that's all about the Siwi editor. I hope I managed to talk about each and every function inside and you know where to find them now. So don't forget many of the features have these little arrows so you need to click on them to be able to see the actual options inside. If you want to watch my reviews of the Siwi photo books, the new elegant covers, and also the uh, standard photo books, the links are going to be in the description below as well. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, subscribe for more.